Tyler Workin is an award-winning documentary photographer in Kansas City, Chicago, and St. Louis. His signature unopposed approach to photography allows him to create photographs that truly lend themselves to real life. Tyler believes that photo photojournalists should be a witness to everything and not just the perfect and pretty. This means embracing what comes your way. Bad weather, ugly venues, French flies all over the dance floor are all part of the process. His talk today is entitled, Tell It Like It Is, The Pure Documentary Approach to Wedding Photography. Tyler, the virtual floor is now yours. All right. I'm going to share the screen, right? Everything looks on track, right? Okay, everybody. Uh, thank you so much uh, for watching and being a part of this really amazing event. I am honored to be a part of it. The amount of people, uh, of talent that's that's uh, been packed into these two days is really incredible. And Daniel and Davina and the Image Salon, uh, big big props to them. But uh, so today, I'm going to um, I'm going to talk about like like I said from my my background a little bit. Um, kind of where this whole mindset of mine uh, comes from. And uh, it, so I'm going to start a little bit about myself first. Uh, I am um, I am from Kansas City, Missouri, which is right smack in the middle of the United States, in case nobody knows. Um, but I am a um, I am, as I say, a giant <laughs> in a little family. Um, that is my uh, my wife, Pam, uh, my son, Zach, in the middle, and my other son, Alex. Uh, and the reason that, uh, so, so to me, moments in life and in photography are the most important. And it's not necessarily about what you look like, because I never take a good photo. Uh, this is pretty much the worst picture I think I've ever seen of myself. Um, but I love this image because it is, uh, it is, it just, I remember the moment when my son and I got to go see, he's a huge Led Zeppelin fan, and we got to go see uh, Robert Plant uh, in concert at the last minute uh, last year. And, you know, the picture's horrible, but I want to remember that moment. And so um, pictures like this, uh, uh, this is my wife and I in front of our house. And, you know, I'm all about the reality of things. I don't, you know, I I set this uh, photo booth up. Um, you know, there's the, uh, the, the wood rot and the oil stains and the and the leaves in the yard and that's just kind of what life is right um you know it's it's a uh, it's all about um embracing that reality right so that's kind of me personally i've uh, i've never uh, been um too much for for fashion as you can tell here <laughs> you know but but this is me uh, professionally. So I take that kind of a life approach into what I do and what I shoot, right? And so these are, in case you don't know about me and what I'm uh, what I'm about, uh, this is these are the three businesses that I currently uh, are am trying to uh, juggle. I have uh, work in photography, uh, workinphoto.com. That has been uh, we started that business in 2002. Uh, so 18 years as a wedding and um, documentary wedding and family photographer, the workshop series, which is, uh, uh, you know, my, my teaching platform that I have that I, that I started probably a decade ago. And then I just recently started working media, which is taking the documentary approach into uh, commercial uh, branding and uh, marketing uh, uh, efforts to kind of use storytelling to help uh, to help companies and nonprofits, things like that. And so this is this is just kind of, you know, the 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 approach and the kind of the I'm a total hands off uh, photographer um, in terms of uh, outside of the portrait time on a day, which is really short. Everything is literally just as it's happening. And I live for moments between the moments uh, during a wedding and, uh, you know, just really relying on serendipity to take over and and not really uh, having too many preconceived ideas of what it should be. Right. And, you know, this just gives me the opportunity to really capture some real moments without having my agenda or my expectations get in the way. Right. I also do this for um, families as well. Um, we, uh, we, uh, hold on. I'm going to make sure I start my time where make sure my time is working. Um, and so we, uh, it's, it, it's the same approach, right? It's, uh, just see what happens. Let the pictures 
present themselves to me as opposed to me forcing forcing those pictures. So we do family work um, and we do the wedding work as well in the same style as well as the um, as well as the commercial side of things. And so I'm just kind of giving you a good feel for kind of how I do things um, and taking this same approach into everything I do, right? And that's what's so wonderful about it, doing stories for like this yoga studio, working for nonprofits. And so all of this, I got all of this passion for this style and all of this training from my journalism days. I um, went to uh, the University of Kansas right down the road and uh, I... Um, I, uh, I I graduated with a photojournalism degree in 1997. I was one of the last two people to graduate from the University of Kansas with a photojournalism degree. And this is where I learned the ropes of this style and this mantra and these ethics behind things. And, you know, it was uh, it was really beneficial to me to shoot sports, uh, to shoot uh, such a plethora of different um, assignments, right? But it was all about what that did for me is it is is it really just said that, you know, it really proved to me that real life can be so much more creative than I can. <laughs> and it's all about the truth, right? It's truth with a camera um, because as a photojournalist, that's what you have to do, right? You have to, you are the trustees of the public. You are, you are the eyes of the public and they trust what you're doing. And so I've taken that same approach to my weddings and my families and my commercial work. Um, and so basically what I'm going to talk about today is, you know, I, this is one of the big things that I really work with uh, my mentoring students on and, and all of my teaching platform is, you know, tell it like it is right. Um, to me, uh, the wedding day, is an opportunity. It is a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's, it, I tell my clients this all the time, those two, you guys are never going to have this many family and friends together in one room at this capacity ever again. And so my whole point is why should we only focus on the wedding, right? This is a, this is an opportunity where we can show um, relationships. We can show family dynamic. We can show personalities, right? Because the wedding day is a, is a is 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 the prime time for that stuff to happen. Um, it's it it really sets the stage for that for that opportunity to tell it like it is. And so therefore, um, you know, I don't need to. Uh, I don't I don't really pay attention to the wedding that much. I know that I know I know that sounds bad to say, but but to me, um, the default the default is uh, is is the wedding, right? So I'm going to try and dig deeper and tell tell stories that are um, uh, more about the couple and not necessarily just about the um, the actual event that we are that we are attending. Right. And so I like to tell it like it is. This is one of my favorite photos of all time. Uh, one of my favorite wedding photos. This was uh, the the groom is a, a, a very funny guy and he just has kind of a weird personality and a weird sense of humor. And these are those um, signs that they that the kids uh, carried carried down the um, uh, 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 down the aisle, right. With like the, here comes your bride. And, and so this was right after the ceremony. We were getting ready for the formal time. He just picked that, picked that sign up. And I just love the look on his face. Um, and I, and I just made a quick picture. It's nothing fancy. It's just a really timeless feeling picture that I love. And, and, and the, this is the picture they actually chose to frame and put in their house as their, as their wedding photo, which, which I just love. I love that so much. And so, and so, you know, uh, what I wanted to talk about today, right, is is the idea that this doesn't have to be done in a certain way, right? Because if you've seen, if 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 you could see some of my first wedding photos, I went from a photojournalist, which I thought I was shooting pretty well as a photojournalist, and then I come and I and then all of a sudden I I transitioned to being a wedding photographer. And I don't know what happened because my images were not as good as they were when I was when I was shooting a photojournalism. Um, even though I had a lot of room to improve everywhere, uh, you know, I I I came to realize that one of the reasons why I think my images were so different was because I was trying to be something I really wasn't, to be honest. I I thought, you know, I I, I was trying to be a wedding photographer because I had to do it in 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 a certain way. I thought. Um, 
And then I, and then I, over the years I have, I have changed that. And, you know, in the end, it, it doesn't have to be, it's not what you think wedding photos should be, right? We can do this any way we want to do this, right? That is, that is the beauty of what we're doing here. And so, um, that's what I'm going to talk about today, right? My approach as a journalist is you're supposed to just be a witness, right? Um, photojournalists are a witness to what's happening and unbiased witnesses to what's happening. Right. And so my, I think in my opinion, uh, your job is to, uh, Oh, I forgot a word <laughs> is to be a witness to everything, not just the happy, pretty and perfect fantasy of what this day should be. I truly believe that people need to remember everything that happened. Um, so that way, those are the moments they're going to remember when they look back on things. Right. So I have some examples. Uh, I've, I've uh, got so many examples. It's over my 18 years of doing this, but I decided to pull a, a few examples of kind of, um, what I'm, what I'm talking about and how I show the reality of weddings. Right. This is, this is one that, uh, really, um, uh, uh, it was quite a, quite a few years ago when this happened, but, uh, if you can see on the bride's forehead, there's a, there's a mark right here. And that is a curling iron burn. So the, the, um, the hairstylist that day burned her forehead with a curling iron on her wedding day. And you would have thought everybody was freaking out. You would have thought the world was ending and this wedding was never going to happen. And in the end, I truly believe I, I, I still to this day think that it was one of the best things that happened that day because it changed the schedule. It changed everything up. There was more serendipitous things happening. The camaraderie behind her to kind of get it fixed and get her get her in the right happy place. It was it was awesome. The makeup artist ended up fixing it. Um, everything looked great. She had you know everything worked out right. But it was a really great story. And you know you know I. I, I actually invite adversity, manageable, manageable adversity um, in at my weddings because I think that um, that's what gives us something to talk about. And it and it helps us uh, once we triumph over that adversity, it really does uh, make us feel like we we accomplished something. And I really do believe that adversity brings out the best in people. Right. And so this is funny. This is the text uh, on an old Blackberry, but this is the text she sent her. Um, uh, fiance at the time. And she's like, that's, this is a GD curling iron burn. She was so upset, but you know what, as you can tell, it worked out. She was really happy at the end of the night. And so you shoot everything, right? I stay till the end of the wedding, the very end, I ride home with the bride and groom at the end of the night. And sometimes you never know what's going to happen. And, uh, we had to, uh, stop on the side of the road uh, with 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 this couple on the way to the hotel, uh, the photo gods were happy, you know, were helping me out with the just married sign on the side of the car there. Um, the the driver put the sign there instead of on the back. Anyway, we we had to pull off because uh, uh, she had to, she had a little bit too much to drink and she had to she got sick a little bit on the outside of the car. And then that's when the groom decided that uh, she had had enough uh, champagne and poured it out. And these are the type of moments that I live for. Right. And then we uh, and then on the way home, she uh, she uh, uh, passed out <laughs> into the champagne bucket, um, which which I love this because the couple those the, these two pictures ended up in their album at the time um, that this was happening he sat there and he's like, thank God you're a wedding photographer. And the driver of the car was like, you're the most ambitious wedding photographer I've ever seen. And I love that they love this kind of reality. Right. And so, um, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting, uh, perspective to talk about, but, uh, uh, you know, not all moments are easy to shoot. Right. So I think you should shoot and show it anyway, at least shoot it. Right. Because you can always delete it afterwards. It's just a picture. We're not we're not going to ruin anybody's life if we uh, if we actually take it. Right. And so this is an example of that. Uh, Ashley and LB got married in Kansas City at a venue where they had um, the dinner was downstairs and the reception was upstairs. And so after dinner, I couldn't find Ashley. And I was like, oh, man, what's going on? Where is she? And I find her sister and her sister's like, she's in the bathroom. She's sick. 
Um, it's just not feeling good. And she's in there with, uh, her fiance, her maid of honor and her fiance's, or I guess husband at that point, um, his uncle, who's a doctor. And they're just trying to make her feel better. And I knew I needed to get into that bathroom to photograph this. And I don't need, I don't need the pictures of the puking or whatever. I just, I just need to photograph this because I knew she was going to be okay. And I knew after 18 years of experience that she was going to, uh, she, she, her entrance into that reception was going to be triumphant. Right. And so, um, I eventually got in there cause I talked to my clients about this ahead of time about the access and you know, this is her, she's, they're feeding her Emmetrol and ginger ale, everything they can. She's not happy. I get that. Right. Um, but, uh, she started to feel better. So they're like, did a toast with the, her maid of honor, her maid of honor is a gin and tonic and they were toasting, uh, all that stuff. Um, so she was ready to get going and she's like, okay, I'm ready to go to the, uh, to the reception. So we start upstairs and she stops at the uh, landing in between the two floors and she's like, oh boy, I'm feeling hot and kind of woozy. So they stop, they put cold beer bottles on her back, right? And he dances with his niece. And this moment is just fantastic. I just these are the type of pictures I live for the 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 moments between the wedding moments, right? And uh, it was a it was a triumphant entrance. It was absolutely there. And this is what I'm talking about is all this moment, the first dance was uh, was super awesome and emotional because they went through some adversity. All those pictures I just showed you ended up in a full spread in their album. You just never know what moments are going to be memorable uh, in the end, right? And so I think that um, I think that we should celebrate that, right? I think that we should, uh, you know, uh, really this moment driven photography is not dependent on perfection. That's what I love about it. It doesn't matter if it rains, doesn't matter if the venue is not what I think I would like to see, not if the light's not good. I can just, I can just rely on the moments. Right. And, um, I think that we should celebrate that, right. Celebrate what you've been given. And I've actually taken a good friend of mine, uh, Kelly Roshka helped me with this idea. Um, and I, I have gone through every wedding I shot from 2016 uh, to, th to, to 2019. And I put together a project of all of my kind of anti-wedding photos. And it was really fun to put together. And it's called Resistance. Um, I actually have an album um, back here uh, in, in the studio with it. And it's just me playing with these pictures that are kind of like the little, the little outtakes um, of, of all these years and putting them together in a bit of an album. Every one of these pictures is real. Every one of these pictures was delivered to the client and at a, and, and happened at a real wedding. And I just think it's fun to kind of think through this. Um, in addition to, um, pictures that are beautiful and great, happy moments, sad moments, whatever, you can just shoot it all. And I love to uh, put in this, uh, put, putting this project together. So, uh, this is, uh, this is the type of thing that really excites me because of that journalism background. And this is how I kind of take some of that into my, uh, weddings and families. And, you know, I think it comes from, uh, I think it comes from the fact that I, I got out of journalism a little bit too early. And so I've been, I've been chasing, uh, chasing that dream of, of, uh, of uh, wanting to be a photojournalist for, for a long time. And so this is kind of me, me trying to do that as much as possible, um, at weddings. And I think it's, uh, uh, something that has made this more sustainable over the years for me. So, um, that's, that's the idea. That's, that's the, that's the idea of just kind of looking past the wedding and treating it like a, like a real life event and, and looking for the reality in weddings. And I think you can really get some images that are really going to surprise you and surprise your clients. All right. We're about at the 20 minutes, I think a couple minutes left, right? If you want to learn more um, about this, uh, I actually uh, I know there's a there's a link about my teachable stuff, but you can also join my uh, workshoppers um, uh, Facebook group that I just opened up recently um, uh, uh, from from uh, last month. So I can kind of, you know, get some education things going. So now this is open to the public and you, you have to get uh, uh, accepted in. But uh, check that out on Facebook where we talk about all this kind of stuff all the time and have and have a uh, weekly weekly content there. So uh, Tyler, that's all right. awesome. You're on time. Yeah. Like 
to the button. Uh, <laughs> congratulations. Okay, I got a couple yeah. of questions for you. Yeah. Um, one of the c- questions is, what's the conversation that you're having with your clients to prepare them about the access to all those moments, all the in-between moments? <sighs> So that's that's actually the biggest thing. Um, I, I, uh, I I'm actually currently right now. Um, tomorrow, yesterday was the first day. We just started a um, and uh, I started an online workshop uh, called The Art of the Moment, and it walks through every step of my process. It's over four days, um, and so there's actually a whole two hours <laughs> of that um, of that uh, 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 workshop that I spend on that. But the bottom line is is it is. Um, it is so important to have that education and that uh, uh, those, those conversations. So I spend about, on average, about four hours of FaceTime with my clients before the wedding happens, educating them um, on, uh, on, on this process and why this is important and to be able to give me that access. So I can't really go into all the hardcore stuff right now about that, but, um, but, that, but that's kind of how much time I spend on that. And just it just it just comes down to education. Awesome. Um, and how do you balance the good versus bad moments so the client doesn't feel like you're exposing them if that <laughs> makes sense? Sure. I mean, you got to look at that as think about how many things over a wedding day, over an eight to ten hour day, actually are go bad. Right. Um, it's very small percentage. It's a super small per- percentage. And 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 to be honest with you, I don't always shoot or I don't I don't always like shoot and show everything it just it just depends on the situation right and it depends on um how i feel uh how important that is or not right and so um there uh, the majority of the pictures are the happy really great emotional uh moments and very very rarely does do things go super wrong in that regard but but you know what clients hire me for that because i talk about this in my consult and they're okay with that going in Right. Awesome. Um, and I'm going to slip this last question in there because you did kind of touch on this during your talk down in okay. at Austin at Friends of Fearless. Yes. Um, so 18 years in, um, what keeps you going and how do you avoid burnout? Yeah, that's a hard one. Um, 18 years is hard in this industry, to be honest with you. Like I said it in my speech where I'm like, uh, I don't think um, I personally don't think that this is a a uh, completely sustainable career where we're all going to retire as wedding photographers. I don't think my body could take it um, <laughs> for sure. But uh, uh, I so so what keeps me going, the good thing about this is, is and the good thing about this style is, is that it's not really um, dependent on me. It's not about me. It's not about my creativity. It's just about it's just about me opening up the possibilities of documenting who they are and what this means to them. And so therefore, you know, it every wedding's different. Every person's story is different. So I just have to find that story each time and that's exciting for me to to be able to find that in each in each thing. And then the next thing that keeps me going is to continuously kind of reinvent myself. And that's what I'm having fun with uh, making those multimedia videos now um, for the for the work and media side of things. So awesome. Um, Yeah, I yeah, I I always love seeing your talk and seeing (laughs) your work and just like how you approach stuff. And it's not for everybody. I get that. I I mean, but like, uh, I think that's like the big thing as being a photographer is like finding who it's for and just really focusing on those people. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, you know, over the years, I've, I've, I've kind of niched, niched my market down maybe too far sometimes, you know, but, uh, you know, if I'm going to be doing it, I want to do it this way so I can kind of continue, uh, continue being excited about it. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being a part of this. Uh, yeah. It's really nice seeing you and enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. Thanks for doing this. All right. Bye everybody. Okay. Um, so we just got, um, a message from one of the foundations that, we're reading uh, that we're raising funds for. So I'm going to read that now and then we'll go on a quick break and get to our next speaker. Um, so they just sent us an email uh, that says, Dear Image Lawn, wow, you guys and gals are just the bee's knees. Oh, that's cute. On behalf of the Gene Foundation for Humans Right and more importantly, on behalf of our beneficiaries in S- Syria, Thank you. This was unexpected and the support we received from your community has been astounding. Not only 
not only in the donations generated, but the message of love, hope, and goodwill that we have received. I've served this message with our staff, and we cannot tell you how uplifting they are to hear. Our international team, whether they are in Syria, Iraq, or elsewhere, work tirelessly to provide mental health treatment, medical care, legal support, and even food to survivors of trauma. It is often in our line of work that we feel our beneficials are forgotten and that we are alone in our mission. Your, organi your organization has given hope not only to the people of Syria who need it most, but to our staff as well. Thank you for your support. You have demonstrated the power of art and the generosity of creators. We couldn't be more grateful. Keep up the great work. Um, man, I, if I, I'm probably going to cry today at some point, and that doesn't typically happen for me. Um, but yeah, like it's like incredible seeing the photography community like rally around this and just like the support that we've each been giving each other and helping each other move forward through this difficult time. Um, so thank you. Uh, we're still taking donations. You can um, do that and please like keep help getting the word out as we wrap up a day two of the event. Okay, we're gonna take a short break and then we'll be right back. 